I wasn't really so involved with China. Um, China, they basically did their own thing. Like I said, they there were 60 um, heads of China, basically, um, and Chinese, and Unit 731, and they did a very, very, very good job of basically, I mean, they built basically China and stuff like that, and were building the roads and the water systems and everything else like that. And I don't really know their water systems, nor did I really want to know their water systems, because clearly JFK or Jimmy Carter were, were, were basically going to use any records or any information I had against me. So it was better if I didn't know. Now, Germany, on the other hand, I knew like the back of my hand. And I had basically built pretty much most of Germany and Poland and quite a few other places. Russia, not so much. Um, maybe at one point in time I knew about them more. But a lot of the records would, would basically be in the Pentagon. Pretty much, like I say, I don't know that it's that that it was Hitler. That I mean, not Hitler. I mean um, um, JFK that actually hit the water system, the German water water system. I can only guess because basically they're supposedly Nazis or fake Germans or something like that, and they used the gliders to come in. And they also had a had a had some troops that were also t attacking from the base. And the whole idea was, well, 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 the gliders came in, the the troops from the base would keep would keep the guard post busy, basically. And they actually did get one guy in, although we shot the other, the other three. I think they used 16 gliders or something like that, and also quite a few people from the ground attacking. Like I said, um, but there was an entrance just just off to the just at the point that was basically covered up, or a, basically a secret entrance or whatever. I think there was a wall that would lift up or something. I don't I don't really remember much about it. So anyway. That's how we actually built the whole. We basically mined the the whole thing. It was basically like a like a like a mining spot where we mined out the inside and then we mined down and around and underneath the river, and came up and then we started doing the two lines going up the sides of the rivers or something like that. I forget exactly what the deal was with them. Anyway, though, something we were doing in Germany for quite a while. Anyway, yeah. So yeah, I'm gonna pick my. I love to mine. Love to dig. So. And most of Germany, basically. A lot of Germany I built. So, anyway. Also Poland, some France, some stuff in France. But anyway, whatever. You lose track after a while and you, and you stop counting how many projects you've done. So, are paid for. It's funny, like, like every every project I was like, I'm going to lose my butt on this one. And I'd be, <laughs> we'd be digging and I'd be losing money or at least, you know, losing time or whatever else like that, you know. You know, basically not really, other than just basically digging a, a big long trench or a big long pipeline that the water can flow through. Yeah, really not much good down there. There wasn't much down there. And then all of a sudden, they'd be like, it's iron or it's copper. You, We've hit a copper raid. Woohoo, you're rich. And I was like, oh, that's great. My third one. <laughs> anyway, like I said, later on, we were smelting and getting 98% or 96% or 92% of, of, of all usable metal or minerals inside of the uh, inside of the ore. So it didn't really matter what we were mining. You know, we we're still getting metal. We were just we're, we just weren't getting as much. So, whatever. You know, and then and then and then just using like like ninety two percent of whatever we got. You know, just separating it all out and smelting it <clears throat> in one of those in one of those everything smelters basically. So anyway, yeah. So, <clears throat> and then just using the extreme temperature for the small little bits. You know, you basically take off all the all the easy to get stuff, and then you start smelting whatever anyway i don't really do it i don't really know much about it you know my, my good smelter people I like like i say there's a reason why i paid my, my my metallurgist uh top dollar and paid them really well and fed them really well and took care of them really well because they're they're they're, they're, they're the backbone of your civilization without good uh, a good metallurgist can make can make the difference between uh between make or break on 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 any in any in, in any company so that's why they're the, the, my guys were always the highest paid of the thing. They would only work four hours and they'd get a full day's pay, basically. So, you know, but they did a really good job. And they were really dedicated. So, you know, you treat your people right and, and they'll treat you right. And, and basically you'll be a success. Anyway, and that's, what, and that's basically was my secret pretty much. You know, I treated my people the best of anyone. Um, they, I paid them the highest. And like I said, sometimes, you know... Um, like I said, they would they would uh, they would actually you know do things that would actually you know on their own on their own uh, recognizance or they they would just think oh well we could do it this way better, and then they're doing stuff you know and I don't even really know about it and it's like but I mean hey we're paying the bills we're making the, we're making the we're making the smelt in the metal so I was like hell yeah <laughs> no problem so I mean like like I say my people were were everything you know without my people I would have been nothing.
And I, and I even said that to a lot of leaders. I said, your people are everything to you. You know, if you don't treat your people right, you won't do well. So, and that's why, uh, and that's why all my metal people were paid the highest. So, and, and, tr and they all got houses and they all got cars and they all got clothes and they were all treated basically like, almost like royalty or at least, or at least the best of the, of the crew. They were, they were like, they, you know, they, they were like the superstars of the thing. My metallurgists were always the highest paid. My scientists were always really well paid. And, uh, and I was always really patient with them. I was like, you'll get it. I have faith in you. So, so anyway, and they did get it. Just like my, just like my aircraft people. I'm like, I'm like, I'm paying, I'm paying for, you know, I want you to do it right, not do it fastest. I don't care about speed. Speed means nothing if you do it wrong. So, so my people were really careful. And that's why the Titanic worked. That's why all my aircraft worked. That's why my rockets worked. You know, I, I basically, basically walked past, past problems because, you know, I had really good people and I really loved my people and they really loved me. You know, I didn't really have to ask them for, for, to, to swear absolute devotion. I mean, later on, I was like, all right, swear absolute devotion. <laughs> they, you know, some of them just laughed. You know, because it's like, <laughs> like, you don't really have to do that. But, I mean, you know, I mean, they already knew I was, I, I was, I was the only game in town. You know, it was the only thing happened, you know, because, like, you know, the nice clothes, nice cars, you know. And they felt good, you know. I mean, they they had built all these all these one on these wonderful, amazing water systems, and they had done all this really great work, and it lasted a really, really, really long time. Like most of my stuff would last 250 years, no problem. 500 years, thousand years, no problem. So, anyway, yeah. So that's Lucifer Star. That's why my Titanic was the best. You know, everybody was. You know, once you got a White Star commission, you know, you were like in. You know, and you know you were in with with the big leagues, the real things that were happening in the world. So, because we did all the real things, we did, we built all the big mines, you know, we, we, we transported all the big cargoes, you know, with our big, beautiful, brand new ships. Like I said, my ships didn't, didn't hardly get old. They only got like slightly worn out or mostly worn out. And then we would just sell them or, or, you know, trade them off. And everybody always wanted to buy my ships because my ships were the white star line ships, you know, even used, they were like new they were better than anything else out there. So. And anyway, I just kind of kept on building ship. I built a new ship every two years, or every so, so years. So, anyway, and so I just got better and better and better. So anyway, that's how you see stars on everybody's. Uh, that's why you see stars on on everybody's shirt, and you see all the stars on the Kremlin, and you see all the stars everywhere, and the, all the pictures of the White Star Line ships. I mean, you know, by the star on the string. So anyway. Like I said, I don't know why, 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 why no one realized that that it was Lucifer White Star Lines mining and shipping. I mean, of course. And like I said, I didn't really that that I put the lines in there because um, White Star White Star Lines shipping because I didn't want it to be White Star Line um, uh, 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 um, ships like spaceships because I also I also had spaceships so so I didn't want to get the two confused. Like I said, and that's how basically I ended up spending a million dollars and building those those really awesome trains in uh, in in England. You know that that had like the the fifteen hundred horsepower like like triangle shaped engines and stuff like that. That's how I ended up doing that. Anyway, you know, it's just an idea. It was a test just to see if it would work, and my engineers made it work. So I mean, I was like, good job, guys. You know, <laughs> they were needlessly complex and all that other stuff. But I mean, I just wanted to see what they could do, and they showed me, and it worked. It was pretty cool. So, anyway, good engineers, and they had a good time, I'm sure, doing it. You know, we spared no expense with anything. So it's just like, you know, you know, you know, once once I knew once once you were trusted, once I knew you were you were good, you know, you'd get whatever you wanted, whatever you wanted. That was the secret.